Italia. opportunity to welcome each and every one of you here. This is the second Sunday of the year 2014. Do you know that? It is the year 2014. Let's welcome the year 2014. Everybody. <laughs> now, according to the Hindu calendar, we had our New Year's since Diwali time. But in the Western calendar, which most of us work by in our day-to-day -day lives, it is a new fiscal year or financial year. And many of you were not able to come last Sunday because it was <gasps> cold and it was freezing. But today, we are about to go boating. So, nevertheless, this is Canada. Next week, it will snow. And then it will have rain. Then, before you know it, it will be April and we will have forgotten about the snow. And we are saying, why is it so hot? So, that is life. We just have to adapt ourselves to all the external climatic conditions. But let's talk about life itself and the internal climatic conditions. You see, we have the external climatic conditions which we have no control over. But the internal climatic conditions we have total control over. And the internal climatic conditions is about how we feel. That is what determines our internal climatic conditions. If we either get heated, 
we get very cold, we get very bold, we get very shy, we get very down, we get very up. All of it is controlled by our internal thermometer that we turn on, off, out and every which way possible. Now where is the switch that does this turning off and on? Where? Copy. This is where our mind is, I guess. Eh? Some people think their mind is at the bottom of their feet. They step on it quite often. But our mind is the key factor. So what we want to talk about today is what we started last week. How do we become more successful? Not that we were not successful last year. No, that, that how do we become not just successful, but more successful? Because last year was a very successful year, wasn't it? We were all still alive. That's a plus. Some of us were more than just alive. Some of us were breathing quite healthy. Some of us graduated. Some of us are struggling to graduate. Some of us are going to school. Some of us got a job. Some of us lost a job. Some of us got new children. Some of us want to get rid of some of our children. You know, uh, all of the above is happening. But last year was a success, and we must build upon our weaknesses last year and capitalize on our strengths. That is. Take our weaknesses and step on them and says, let me rise above my weakness and capitalize on my strengths. Let my strengths give me more revenue. Not only monetary revenue, but a better person revenue. So we identify five specific actions that we can all engage in. That we first believe in ourselves. Now, how many people believe in yourself? Put your hands up, please. And that's, you see what I mean? How are you not sure about that? How many people believe in yourself? That you believe in you? You don't believe in yourself? No. Let me say that one more time so you can digest this question. How many of us believe in ourselves? Because nobody else is going to believe in you if you don't believe in you. So start believing in you. Let me see the pundits over there. How many of you believe in yourself? Put your hands up. Right? Thank you. They believe in God. But we have to believe in ourselves first. Before we can believe in God, because God is the self. Thus, so believe in ourselves, not that we didn't believe last year, but we must have more profound belief this year. Have faith in God. Believe in oneself and says, God is within me. Then, respond positive to all situations. What does that mean? Tell me. We have a young group here today. What does that mean? Respond positive to all situations. Should I pick on somebody? Or do we have any brave people? What does that mean, Tasha? Try to look for the good. All right. Anybody else? What about some of the young married couple? People who are about to face the great challenge of life, of having children or having children that... You know, bringing them up and life is so difficult. Oh God, I have a child. Difficult life. Any one of those people here today? No? So what? Respond to positive to all situations. Anybody? Yes. Everything is gained through his grace for your betterment. So everything is gained through God's grace for your betterment, so be thankful for it. Give him a big hand. But if every morning you get up and you start your car and it wouldn't start, <laughs> how do you respond positive to that? Nadrajan. How did I know you were going to talk about this? <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, try to be positive. Give him a big hand. Please. So sometimes everything is supposed to be then under one condition, it doesn't. That doesn't mean that you give up. Have a positive. So it didn't start the first time. Kick the tires a little bit and go back and start it again. You know, kicking the tire really helps the car to start. Try it sometimes. If you're not starting, just go down and kick the car. The tire, of course. And then your foot will hurt. And then you hurl your foot and try to start the car again. It works. It's magic. When you kick the tire, what are you doing? You're hurting your own foot. 
You're letting your frustrations out. Because when you let the frustrations out, you go there and gently, mm, Jai Prabhu, hey, Bajarang Bali, it will start. Of course, you must always have a backpack of a charger or a booster cable there to help you out. Everybody must have a booster cable in their life. And by the way, what do you need to make a booster cable work? You need another car. That means somebody has to be willing to let you connect with their car. So it seems that when you need a boost in life, you need someone. Say it. You need someone to. Very good. So remember, stay positive. But if you're negative, how do you get somebody to help you? You cannot get anyone to help you when you're negative. So your car is done. Some of us don't have a car. Our life is done. And we need a little boost. But if we are negative, no one wants to connect with us because we are too negative. But if we are positive, we'll get connected. And guess what? Others will boost our life back up. The boosting analogy works good, doesn't it? Give Natarajan a big hand for that. Actually. Now, seeking to understand. Why do we need to understand anybody? Who cares about what other people think? I understand myself. That's important. Isn't that what it is? If you feel that way, you're a fool. Seek to understand others. Because in understanding others, you maintain harmony and you avoid disharmony. The world is full of, they don't understand me, I don't understand them, so we are not going to get along. But if there is no understanding, then there is misunderstanding. And when there's misunderstanding, at least a disharmony. So try to understand. Now, if everybody is trying to understand the other person, then everybody will have understanding. But if everybody is waiting for the other person to understand them, then nothing will happen. You see, Natalie and I, Nat Natalie, put your hands up, please. I'm going to pick a Natalie. Could you stand up, Natalie? Take a bow, Natalie. Give Natalie a big hand, please. Now, Natalie is, is the supposedly secretary of our youth group, right? Did I say supposedly? She is the secretary of youth. Give her a big hand for that. And Natalie is also part of our Gurukul class, where she's learning to become a priest one day. Give her a big hand, please. So why am I picking on Natalie again? You don't know. I just wanted to make a point, Natalie, that you have so much to do. You're working. You're taking some part-time studies. And you're able to engage yourself in these things, all of these things, and still seeking to understand the challenges of life at the same time, that you're not overburdened by that. Now, that is what life is all about. Give her a big hand. Now, she has a few things to do. Now, I've known some people, Panditji, I'm so busy, I don't know what to do, but they don't take time to understand others or their lives. When we take time to understand others, our life clearly becomes visible to us. Because sometimes our lives is down because we misunderstand others. We misunderstand how we are perceived. We misunderstand how people feel. I have so many people come to me and tell me, Paniji, nothing is wrong with me. It's because of the way they think about me and the way they treat me. That's why I'm the way that I am. And I'm saying, oh my God, what kind of pill do I give this person? We are the way we are because we choose to be that way. And if you try to understand others, we'll find out that we have clearly understood ourselves. Prem Sushidapati Ramachandra Bhagavan Ki. Be willing to listen. Now, not just to listen. Have a willingness to listen. You know, there's just, you know, sometime you're talking to, this is the parent-child relationship. Yes, mom, I'm listening. <laughs> That's the time they just turn you off. I mean, Willing to listen. The will is there to listen. And as such, anything you say, I will clearly, not only hear, but I will understand because I've listened. Many of us say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we can make it, yes, I understand. What do you understand? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Do you know anybody like that? Who, when you're talking to them, they say, yeah, I understand, I understand. Then you ask them, what did I say? Oh, I don't know. But you said you understood. They're so prone to saying I understand that they totally misunderstand me. So it's better we shut up and just listen, nod our head. So now, let's review. Five steps. Believe in ourselves, have faith in God, respond positive to all situations, 
seeks to understand and be willing to listen. Where is all of this got to happen? In our bank account? On our cell phone? Where does it have to happen? Within us, that is in the... Some of you are not sure. Is it mine? It is in our minds. Bolo. Do you have one? So, the key to change in life is in our minds. If we lead here today and we make a resolution, then we can change our life. Today, as I mentioned earlier, that we want to talk about how we can transform our lives and we want to transform. Everybody needs to change. Do you agree? And we need to change for the better. And it's not about losing five pounds. It's not about getting the ladies a body of a Coke bottle shape. It's not about the men having a lot of chest or muscles. It's not about shaving your head to be, I don't know, does that make you masculine these days? It just seems to be the thing. Okay. Right? I hope the ladies don't start shaving their hair to be feminine. It'll really be a bald headed society. Right? So, some of you are thinking about doing that? Okay. So, the point is, it is not about those things that we want to transform. We want to transform ourselves that we are thinking different. And by the way, when we think different, we will act different and we will look different. We will appeal to others differently. Thus, we become different. It doesn't matter how many we change, how much hairstyle we change, how many suits of clothing, what kind of perfume and cologne we use, what kind of underarm deodorant we use. That does not change us. That's when you make us smell and look good. Nothing more. If we want to change, we have to make that inner change. San Goswami Tusidas tells us in the Ram Charit Manas that the possibility to change is beyond our imagination what kind of transformation can happen in our lives. And he says, there are two things required for change. parents who have children in school between who are children who are in first grade all the way to high school put your hands up good how many of you can help your children do their math work of that group put your hands up so we lost half of you right right good now why is it that you're able to do help them with their math work say it because you know that stand up I want to see all those people who said they can help their children with their math work. Stand up, please. Uto, please stand. Come on. You have a question to answer. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Only five of you, six of you, seven of you. Right, now, stand, remain standing. Sir, why can you help your children? How is it that you're able to help them? Because you know the math, sir, you? You know the math? Math teacher? Because you know the math? You know the principle? You? Same? Same over there? Same? Good. Now listen carefully. Now, so, because you know the math, you can help your children. 
So then if you understood God, then you could teach your children too, didn't you? Good. Bear that in mind, because the next question is coming up. Have a seat. Sit down. So, how many of you understand God? Put your hands up. <laughs> yeah, all right, good. What does he look like? How many of the parents of the same grouping that I talked about who have children from the age of five to high school understands God? Put your hands up. Only those parents, please. Uh -huh, you're putting your hands here right now. <laughs> you're not sure, but when I said math, right up there. Because you're confident of it. So, now those same parents that who understands God, how many of you are helping your children to understand God? Now that's the question. No hands. One, two, give those people a big hand, please. See, Sant Goswami Tusi Raj kehte hai, ye sadhu samaj or prayagraj. He says the holiest place, prayagraj is considered to be the most holiest place, but the holiest place is only a holy place because the occupants of the place are sadhu samaj. Sadhu Samaj means wise people. And the holiest of places where wise people live. That means our homes technically could be the holiest of places. Because we, the parents, are wise people. The question is, are we wise people? Do we know enough, like we know about mathematics, to help our children get a good grade? Do we know enough to tell them about how they can get good grades in life? By believing and understanding God. For in so doing, we become Sadhu Samaj and our homes become Prayagraj. That doesn't mean you don't have to come to Mandir anymore, by the way. Some of you are waiting for the excuse. Not an excuse. Because by coming to Mandir, we learn how to become Sadhu Samaj. How to become wise about God. So he says that wherever there is learned people and those who go there to listen to those learned people, they will develop the quality that wherever they are in his Prayagraj and all those who speak with them will understand and gain the knowledge of God as such, they are Sadhu Samaj. And he says, don't believe that it cannot happen. Some of us believe like, you know, some children says, I can't learn math. No way, everybody else is smart, I'm not smart. Or I can't do this. I can't chant Bhagavad Gita, oh, God, that's too difficult in Sanskrit. Some of us have these problems, right? Sankar Swami Tulsidas tells us in this Chopai that everything is possible. transformation that is transformation by the influence of God can occur to anyone at any time now what does this mean but although it can occur to anyone at any time there is a certain requirement for it to occur 
Now, how many of us have ever seen a caterpillar in our lives? Put your hands up high in the air. A, a caterpillar. Describe it to me, Tasha. What does it look like? I want to hear you. You got a microphone in front of you. Uh, it's like a small worm-like thing. That it's a worm-like thing, yeah. like worm-like yeah, thing, right? Yeah, like many legs. And, and it got many legs, creepy crawly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are we agreed? That's what a caterpillar looks like. How many of you have ever seen a butterfly? What does a butterfly look like? Natalie, tell me what a butterfly looks like. It has beautiful wings. And it's graceful, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. It's so colorful, isn't it? Now, where does a butterfly come from? Caterpillar. You mean that creepy, crawly, ugly looking thing becomes that beautiful thing? How is that possible? Science calls it metamorphosis, right? We can also go through the process of metamorphosis in our minds. That it doesn't matter how ugly our life and our disposition is, we can change it to become beautiful and soaring like a butterfly. Do you agree? Talia, if you agree. The question is, what kind of medicine do we have to drink to make that happen? Some people take drugs and then they feel like they're soaring like a butterfly. Some people take alcoholic spirits. Some people take all kinds of substance because they understand the beauty of changing their life from a caterpillar to a butterfly, but they're using the wrong method. <laughs> Sankar Goswami Tulsida says that this glories and the philosophies of God is like an ocean of beautification. Once one immerses oneself into that ocean, one become bathed by the beauty and the glory of God, the transformation occurs. But how does one get to understand the beauty and glory of these scriptures? It is said by Satasangati Mahimane Guru. Without satsang, without sitting with the company of the wise, the learned, one cannot learn. So remember now, he says good company. How do you know good company? They're good looking people, right? All the good looking people is good company. They dress nice, they drive the right car, they're good people, hang out with them. They all have cell phones, they all have the latest iPods, they're good people. Is that how we identify good people? Or they hang out at the right nice clubs and they, you know, drive. Is that how we identify good people? Friend in need is friend in need. Friend in need, that's right. So they're not your friends yet, you have to make friends with them. But if you want a friend, you have to start out by being a friend. You're... Don't expect everybody else to be the friend in need when you are not a friend in need. You have to start out by being a friend. So San Swami Tulsidas is saying, and Prabhu Sri Ramachandra is telling the world that yes, you can change. Change is inevitable. Any person who says they cannot change, consider themselves dead. Because we, without choice, are changing. We are metamorphosizing. Our body is shedding its skin. At what rate? Anybody from the scientific world can tell me that? We shed quite a lot of our top layer of skin. Every day, all the dust in your house, half of it is your skin. Did you know that? Yeah. So we are constantly shedding, we are constantly changing our exterior. But we need to change the interior environment by changing our thought process, seeing the world differently. And it doesn't matter how much disaster we've had in our lives, how much joy, how much money we have, or how much money we do not have, the change can occur within us. The external climatic conditions are controlled by God. The internal ones are controlled by us. And then when we make it viable, we see God clearly within ourselves. Thus, our message today, Ajka Sandesh is both simple. Very simple. Change. Not only our clothes. Change our thinking only. Look at our lives and says, if I had thought about this differently, if I'd seen it differently, would it be different today? Remember, finally, the problem is not the problem. The problem sometimes is how you're looking at the problem. The problem is not the problem. Sometimes the problem is how you're looking at the problem. Change your glasses, you might see the problem differently. 
You know, I can't see that. I can't. So then put on glasses, you'll see it. I don't mean literally put on glasses. Look at it from a different perspective. You know, even your plate of food, if you look at it from one angle, it looks nice. If you turn the other way, it doesn't look good. So sometime when you're eating, you ever do this? You ever turn the plate around kind of to start at this end? Anybody does that? I thought I was crazy. Everybody does that, right? You start, you start, let me start from this end where the roti is. So change the perspective and it becomes appealing or not so appealing. Announcements. Who's come to the mandir for the first time this year? Put your hands up. Remember the new year, 2014. Put your hands up. Oh, wow. All these newcomers. Give them a big hand, please. <laughs> Who's here in the mandir for the first time ever? Put your hands. Where are the newcomers? Anyone new who just come to the mandir? One, two. Wonderful round of applause for each of you. Welcome them to the mandir. Those of you, those of you who are here for the first time, please feel welcome to join me for lunch today. We have a tradition in Ram Mandir that all the newcomers, I have the privilege of sitting with you for lunch. Please do join me. I, I notice I say this and then when I go to the banquet hall, nobody wants to sit with me. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe I have to change my perfume or something. But please feel free to sit with me, okay? And then we'll chat a little bit, renew acquaintances, and we'll get to know each other. And especially those of you who have not come to the mandir for the last three months, and I know who you are. So, so please come and sit with me and have lunch today. Uh, today we want to thank Deepak Nayak uh, for sponsoring Preeti Bhoj. Give them a wonderful round of applause, please. <laughs> Being proactive in our planning, we want to invite everyone that every family during the year, should take the opportunity to sit down and participate in puja in the mandir. That is the extra. I come on a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and sit and do puja, or a Tuesday evening, or a Monday evening, uh, or a Friday evening, and be the yajman and do puja once a year at least. Now, some people do puja in their homes. Come to the mandir with your family and then make that day a family event. And you can sponsor the pretty bhojan for that day. Big event in your life. Invite all your friends and says, I'm inviting you to come to me to go and pray to God. Wow. Quite a revelation, isn't it? We invite them to do everything else. We invite them to go and play, to go to the movies, to go to the park, to do other things, to party, but invite them to come and pray with you. Nothing is wrong with that. Do you see anything wrong with that, anybody? So, plan your date, book your date. You have Monday night, you got Tuesday night, you got Saturday evenings if you want, you have Sunday morning. 52 weeks in a year, times four, that's a hundred and something. So at least we should have at least a hundred and something people booking to do puja and coming to the mandir with their entire family. Show them your other side. They know all the other side. Your divine side. Let them come and see what you do because they don't know what you do. Maybe they've never come to a mandir in their life or they don't go to a place of worship or they don't believe in the Hindu way of life. Bring them to your mandir. Let them see. Prem Sutsi Tavati Ramachandra Bhagavan Aki.